Hey, good evening. Good evening. It's Dr. Brandy starting our Facebook live stream tonight. It's Wednesday night. Happy hump day. You know, every, every time, every session, I always say happy hump day because this is like the hump of the week and then it's supposed to be downhill from here. I'm hoping that it's downhill from here. Um, but you know, happy hump day. You can also take it to mean happy hump day. Get your hump on. That's, um, hey, if you want to, I'm down with it. Go right ahead. Do your deal. Do your deal. Uh, so how's everybody doing? Um, hope everybody's doing awesome. Hope you had a great week so far. Um, what's good on Wednesday? Well, today, um... What's good is just us meeting, us meeting and hanging out. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this, so I'm glad that we get to hang out and chill. Um, glad that we get to just spend a little time together, talk a little bit, laugh a little bit, just see what's going down. Um, I was just listening to some music before I got on, and that's one of my ways to like get pumped up and get ready to do do some things. So I just, I love music. I love to dance. I love to sing. So, um, you know, I'm still like kind of grooving in my head to the music that I was listening to. Um, but welcome to the Life Love Libido show. I'm Dr. Brandy, your favorite OBGYN and libido coach. And I teach women how to feel good in and out of the bedroom and help them get their sexy back, right? Who doesn't want to get their sexy back? Who wants to keep feeling like, oh, their mojo is gone. They don't know where it went, how to get it back. None of that. So I teach women how to get their sexy back and just be that confident, vibrant, wonderful woman um, in this world. So welcome to our show. Um, tonight's topic is something that I wanted to hit upon. Um, last week we talked about your orgasmic potential and what that meant and what it looks like and just how you can help to bring that out, um, and bring that to the forefront and just have your, your orgasmic be potential be what it is that you want it to be. Um, but tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit more um, about um, kind of a step before and um, just talking about sex in general and good sex and bad sex and what that looks like um, because you can't get to your orgasmic potential if you're not having good sex um, in, the, in the forefront of that, before that. So I thought I would bring that topic to the table today. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So the description that I put in the, um, for the live stream just had to do with, you know, why bad sex is bad for you. Um, so, you know, will it hurt you? Most people think, well, you know, it may or may not hurt me, but you know, I just do it. I'll just do it. But bad sex is not good for you. It is not the best way to tap into that whole um, space of who you are and your vitality and all that other stuff. Hey, Dr. Ferlandi, thanks for joining. Um, so tonight we're talking about good sex and bad sex and what we can do to have good sex. So, so glad that you're here. Um, so yeah, so, you know, who wants to have bad sex? Nobody wants to have bad sex. That just makes it harder for you to have sex in the first place if you're having bad sex. Um, and when I say bad sex, um, there's a few different things that I'm talking about. Um, one is just you um, not enjoying it. Like it doesn't feel good. And you're just there and, um, and you know, you, you're not really into it. You're just like, whatever. Hey, Dr. Jaquel, thanks for joining. So we definitely, definitely, definitely 
don't want you just having sex because just because like if you're gonna have sex you might as well have some good sex and be into it and enjoy it um so one is just like bad sex because you're there hey dr janine um and you're just laying there and you're just like whatever can you hurry up and get this over with i'm just i'm done with it but um <laughs> good sex is good for the soul yes hallelujah yes it is yes it is um but then there's also kind of bad sex in the sense that it feels good physically but on the back end on the back side of it you're you don't feel good about yourself either because you engaged with somebody who you probably should not have you might have you know done some some things that you were just like eh, i probably should have left that alone um or you just the interaction or the relationship that you have with that person may not be the best and you know some of those those outside issues things that are outside of the bedroom that are unresolved can kind of make you think that oh even though the actual physical part of it was good this other part is just not good and that can take away from definitely your enjoyment of sex your perspective and your whole outlook on sex and whether it's good or bad um, and definitely we, we want sex to be good because we want it. We want to nourish your soul. And I personal, personally believe that sex is um, a gift from God. He gave it to us to So he gave us our bodies and he gave it to us for us to be able to enjoy. There is certain for me, I believe there's certain context and way that it should be done. Um, but bottom line is we were created as sexual beings and we are nourishing our bodies and nourishing our souls when we are engaging in sex and engaging in good sex. So with that being said, um, let's talk about what good sex is. So we kind of already touched on a couple things. One is just good sex is something that feels good. It feels good during the interactions. You feel, um, you don't feel pressured. You don't feel like you have to do something. You are just open and receptive. Um, and just being open and receptive sometimes is a little difficult, especially for women. Um, we have a hard time even accepting compliments from like other women. Like somebody could tell you, oh, I love your hair. Oh, I love your earrings. And you'll be there like, okay, but you got to kind of downplay it. And, or you feel like you have to give a compliment to that woman, give it back. Otherwise there's like some sort of imbalance. So it's hard for us as women to be in a position to receive. And when we are receiving, um, we kind of feel like, oh, well, maybe we need to do something and give something back. Um, so just being on the receiving end is a beautiful thing and just being open to it. Um, so one thing you can try for a good sex and you want to talk to your partner about it is just like, hey, is it possible? Would you be open to doing something where it's just about me and just try and experiment to see, you know, how you feel just receiving. It'll probably feel weird um, in the very beginning just because we're not used to that. We're used to being givers and helping everybody and doing all that stuff. But just see what it feels like to be on the receiving end and go from there. And then we talked a little bit about the, out, the things that happen outside of the bedroom. Definitely relational issues, can taint what's what you feel in the bedroom and so you want to make sure that you settle those things or at the very least agree that you're going to table it put it out of your mind if you're able to do that have sex and then bring it back up again but most of the time if it's not something really serious if you do that by the time you're finished it, it'll be fine. <laughs> you won't even have to worry about it. it was, it's just like, what is you? I don't even know. It's, it's gone. It's, we're done. So um, that's another way or another tip for ensuring that you're having good sex. The other things that we can talk about in terms of good sex is that it is an energy boost. It can give you a lot of energy. Um, 
you know, when you are approaching it from the standpoint of, oh, it's another thing on my to-do list, da 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 da, um, you you put it into a category of something that is actually draining your energy away from you. But when you are engaging in sex and it, it's something that you're looking forward to, or you're excited about, that actually is an energy booster and it boosts your vitality, it boosts your energy level, it allows you to be able to do certain things, um, let's do more really, to do more and to feel, and to feel good. Definitely having sex raises your feel-good hormones. Um, it raises some things called oxytocin and it raises dopamine and other endorphins. And those actually literally help you to feel better and comforted and connected. Um, and so that helps in turn for you to feel more connected and comfortable with your partner and be more creative um, with what whatever you're doing, no matter what it is. Ha, Dr. Ferlandi says, settle it first. <laughs> Dr. Ferlandi, if it's a big issue, you may not be able to settle it first. So you go, you don't be on drought. You gonna be on hiatus for a while until you solve it. No, 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 no. You got to do it. You got to raise the endorphins. And that also sets up um, a sense of goodwill. So that you're you're more likely to be able to approach a, conf, a situation of conflict with a little bit more compassion for your partner and love for your partner. So if you can settle it first, okay. But if it doesn't seem like it's going to get settled first, you might have to set it to the side and then come back and then um, you know do a little something something and then go take it, take it take it to the the next level. Yeah. Um, so the other good or the other tip for having good sex is just being aware of what creates intimacy for you um so when you're in a long-term relationship a lot of times you stop doing the things that you used to do like holding hands long kisses long hugs looking at each other when you're talking half the time you're, you know, you're sitting across the table or sitting on a couch with somebody. Both of you guys are looking at your phone. Like there was recently some, uh, an article that had gone around, um, about a photographer who had taken photos of people who were on their phone and then kind of Photoshopped out the phones to show what we look like, um, just in day-to-day -day life. And, you know, every, nobody's looking at each other. We're all looking down at our phones or, or doing something that has to do with a screen as opposed to literally looking somebody in the eye and having a conversation and talking to them. So building intimacy will get you to a point of having good sex um, and whatever that looks like for you and your partner. That could mean and you know that you are lying together in bed naked just holding each other. You don't necessarily have to have sex um, unless you both want to, then go right ahead, have a good time. Um, but just different things like that, going out for a walk together, um, going to a cooking class together, doing something new and different together. Those are all things that build intimacy and build a stronger connection between you and your partner. Um, and so I know I've talked a lot about um, kind of partnered sex and coupled sex but these same principles would apply if you don't have a partner and you are engaging in what I like to play, call self-play. So essentially you are taking time out to get to know yourself, get to know your body, get to know what you like, what you don't like, just getting more intimate with yourself. Um, there's a stigma of sorts associated with self-play and you know you're not supposed to do that if you're a good girl you shouldn't do that and all of that baggage that comes with that thought of masturbation or self-play um, but it can be a valuable tool for you to learn more about yourself um, to learn your anatomy to learn what spots feel good to you, what spots don't feel good to you, what turns you on, what doesn't turn you on. Um, and you have an opportunity 
to be able to learn a great deal about yourself. <laughs> Not just good girls and Catholics, Dr. Berlandi, it's a, a few other religions that are like, yep, nope, none of that. No self like. Um, but you have an opportunity to be able to know going into a relationship, if that's what you want, being able to know and direct and tell your partner, hey, you know, this turns me on or I like it this way um, versus going into it blindly and just kind of letting somebody touch you and you're like, well, I don't really like that or, you know, what have you. But that also plays into confidence level and being able to express yourself um, with a partner or with somebody else. Um, so that's it for tonight. Just wanted to, to give you guys a few tips on how good sex can be good and how you can en enhance that and make it better. Um, how bad sex is bad for you because it just... it throws everything off it doesn't make you feel good about yourself it doesn't make you feel good in general um and i just i would like to share just the intention that i have um this past weekend i actually went on a trip to sedona and i don't know if anybody has been to sedona um, I anticipated that it would be a very relaxing trip. I went with a few of my girls from med school and, you know, we have an annual um, trip where we get together and just hang out and all that stuff. But our theme this year was about intentions and being intentional with our lives, with our lives. And I thought, you know, how can that um, translate into what I'm doing in terms of uh, women's sexual health and helping women to really um, tune into that part of themselves and not neglect it and not disregard it. Um, and so I want to be intentional about having good sex. Like, I don't want to have bad sex. If, if I can have good sex and I can teach other people to have good sex or great sex, um, then I have accomplished my goal and, and accomplished what it is that I have set out to do. Um, because I don't want you to dread sex. I don't want you to have boring sex. I want you to be comfortable. I want you to be able to um, enjoy the benefits of sex, um, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of sex. So that was one of the intentions that I set while I was in Sedona. And it was, it was an awesome trip. It was, it was very different because um, I was really expecting it to be relaxing, but there was a lot of kind of mental shifts and things that were happening um, that really were things that I needed, didn't know, didn't know that I needed them. They were uncovered um, and uh, I'm just, I'm glad I went on the trip, but it, it wasn't your typical like, oh, go to the spa, just relax kind of trip. So, but I had a good time and I came back and was able to, and I was able to articulate that intention that I have. So just wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the live stream tonight. Um, if you are interested in having a strategy session with me to figure out how we can get you to have good sex or great sex i would love to connect with you offline um, you can go to my schedule at b at bitly uh, forward slash dr brandy um, to schedule a strategy session with me um, it's d it is b i t dot l y forward slash d r b r a n d y e if you know anyone who can benefit from this information please sharing is caring share the video share um, what you learned um, through your time here um, and if you're catching this on the replay type replay so i know that you you caught it you got it um, and last but not least just go out there and have some good sex, either partnered sex or self-play. Have a good time. So that's all for tonight. Um, I am Dr. Brandy, OBGYN and libido coach, and I teach women how to feel good in and out of the bedroom. 
and get help teach women how to get their sexy back. So that's all for tonight. Have a wonderful evening and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.